Hey guys, it's Kathleen. Today I have to make an impression of my Typodont mouth for Fix Props. So this is the alginate, then I got my mixing bowl with my spatula, and then I have four packets of dental stone. Here are the impression trays. Now we have to make sure that these impression trays fit seamlessly into the mouth making sure that it covers all of the teeth, even the third molars. This is an upper tray because as you can see, there's space for the palate. So let's see if it works. Looks like it covers most of the teeth, but there's a little bit of the third molar showing. So what we could do is use rope wax to cover the edges of the tray to make sure that it encapsulates all of the teeth. So this is what it looks like afterwards. You can see with the rope wax, we've extended this tray a bit more to make sure all the teeth are captured. So you could see what I'm talking about a little bit better with the mandibular teeth. Third molars are really showing here. I need to cover that part with the rope wax. This is some tray adhesive. Now it's time for the alginate. So when mixing alginate, you have to work fast because of the short setting time. I put it on the tray, made sure it was nice and smooth, and then I took my impression. Next, I poured up some dental stone and I poured it onto my impression. While my cast was setting, I started a different project for Fix Pros where I made a provisional for my veneer prep. We prepped the veneer a few classes ago and the next assignment was to make a provisional for it. So I Vaseline my teeth, put the provisional material in the putty and then set it on the tooth. I waited a few minutes and then took it out and that was it. After about 30 minutes, my cast was set and there were some bubbles when I took it off the impression so I just nicked them off with a buffalo knife. Then it was time to trim. As you can see, there's some extra material that I'm gonna take off with a pineapple shaped burr and that was pretty much it. Those are my two casts ready for fixed pros. All right, so we arrived to Medisa's. It's Saturday and we're all dialed in. Look at oh, Mikey, yes. Gabby, <laughs> acrylic. We got pink nail drills. There we go. Let's see your pink nail drill, Mikey. Right here. Shout out Amazon. So we're gonna make a provisional restoration on three and five. We have our acrylic and our drills. Nope, nope. What are you working on? I'm trying to get right. the embrasures on this side and this side, but right. the occlusion no, looks I, not I so bad. I have to check off. it again. The contour is okay. The margins are closed. Yeah, nice. But that's the finished product. 100% right there. We recently started Endolab this semester. In this lab, I prepped and obturated the buccal and lingual canals of this premolar. I started by measuring the working length of the canals with the size 10K file. Ah! From there, I placed a size 15H and 15K file on the buccal and lingual canals respectively. This allowed me to visualize and prevent confusing the canal locations as both files look different on an x-ray. After confirming my working length, I negotiated my canals by starting my file sequence to remove the infected pulp and clean and disinfect the canals. And before we get back into Endolab with Nico, if you're applying this cycle, check out Dent Edge, the website Nico and I created to guide students through the dental school application step by step. We've helped count the students get interviews and acceptances. Within the course, we offer a 28 day schedule, including daily tasks, over 65 videos, resources, and more. We also offer personalized services like complete application reviews, mock interviews, personal statement edits, and more. Check out the description below for more information. Now that we disinfected the canals, we have to fill and seal the canals to prevent bacteria from re-entering. 
I decided to record this part on a plastic incisor with see-through roots so that it's easier to follow. First things first, I measured the working length with a gutta percha. On a real patient, we take x-rays to confirm the working length prior to sealing the tooth. I want the gutta percha to give me some resistance when it's at its working length. Initially, the canal was too wide, so we removed a couple millimeters of the tip, re-measuring our working length. The gutta percha is cone-shaped and gets thicker as you go up. Once I got adequate tug back, I coated the gutta percha with sealer and placed it into the canal. Then I took a spreader and pressed the gutta percha against the wall to make space for my accessory canal. I repeated the process until no more cones fit, making sure to add sealer to each cone. There, I melted the tips of the accessory cones and plugged the remaining material into the canal past the CEJ. And after, I had a perio seminar where we learned how to place four different types of sutures. We had the perio faculty and residents help us throughout the process. We started out with simple discontinuous box sutures. Got the sutures down. Let's see yours, Winslow. Nice, nice. This is my first one, not as good. Second one, better. It's a little bit tighter. Solid. Serena, let's see your sutures. Let's see the sutures. Oh, no, I'm shy. I'm shy. <laughs> I'm shy of my work. Gabby? Ooh, solid, solid. Turn it to the side. Turn it to the side. Bang. Let's see yours. Let's see yours. Bang. Yours. Let's see yours. Bang. My mom's gonna watch you. All right. Time to do vertical external mattress sutures. Shout out to Elaine and Serena. Here, as you can see, we're placing external vertical mattress sutures. So we're just here practicing the technique. That's how mine came out. Okay. Serena's. Dang. Comment down below how good okay. it is. Okay, wait, rate, rate the sutures. All right, and then we got Lane suture. Rate it. <laughs> the lanes, let's get off. Comment below who's is better. <laughs> the lanes or, or Serena's? Wait, where am I? And then we'll show Winslow's. What? <laughs> Serena's? Here, and Lane. No, Nico's is probably the best. Nico's is probably the best. Serena? Wind's low. And then mine. Way more. Usually we run this course like up. Alright, we're gonna do a horizontal master suture. So this suture technique is one of my favorite sutures to place. It creates a really cool square pattern once we finish, which you will see very shortly. see my hemostat was extremely dual and did not want to grab the split end however my handy college pliers nearby did the job and the last technique we practiced was the crisscross suture technique first we extracted a tooth and placed a cotton pellet into the sulcus of the tooth to simulate a collagen plug after extracting a tooth this is done when you want to build the bone level for implants but anyways, here's a crisscross technique and I am using my hands often to pull the suture, which you shouldn't be doing. However, my hemostat was extremely dual and I had to work with what I had, so. But here's the final product. I think it came out pretty nice. That wraps up the suture session. There Watch you go. this. Watch this. There we go. Nice. Beautiful. And then we cut it. And wow, those scissors are so much more sharp done. than mine. Nice. Final result. Oh my god, it's not good. <laughs> I'm very. Dude, that's actually nice. Really? Yeah. Gabby's is really Ooh, good. Solid.